have missionary Ronnie come and introduce himself and his ministry and um, give us a word for today as well. Thank you for being here. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. I'm still working on my y'all. <laughs> yeah, from Israel, it's uh, on the floor as well. Being a refugee from California, so uh, for about four years. <clears throat> you have to forgive me today if uh, I sneeze and cough and my voice is the host, allergies, things are wrong in there. So I don't think I'm that. But, um, it's a real honor to be here today with my beautiful wife, Cindy, my partner in crime, my fellow workers in the battlefield. And uh, I'm going to share with you about Israel. Have you heard about Israel? Yeah, right? Yeah. To the Bible, right? All over the place. You know, Israel is the place where everything started and everything's going to end. Israel is considered also the apple of God's eye. You know what apple means? The apple of the eye? It's the very sensitive part of the eye that if someone touches it, it's very uncomfortable, right? You get mad if someone touches the apple of the eye, right? So... <clears throat> God feels the same way about little Israel. He chose this group of people a long time ago. By the way, he shared about the manna. He shared about manna. Uh, you know what in Hebrew, manna means a portion. It's, it's interesting, he gave him just enough for the day. He couldn't keep any. Remember, it's spoiled. Just one portion for the day. Just uh, mention that the meaning in Hebrew and that he gives us just enough for the day. Right? Um, give you a brief background. Um, I grew up in northern Israel, in Galilee, western Galilee. Um, my mother survived the Holocaust. She was in the camps in Auschwitz. Grandma, parents died there, and um, I grew up with a lot of <clears throat> anger in my heart towards religion and towards God, if there was a God, because of the evil that happened, you know. And then when I was 18, everybody in Israel goes into the military, a fire trooper jumping out of airplanes in Israel, chasing terrorists. And um, then I traveled the world and was an Israeli hippie. I used to have long hair once. <laughs> hard to believe. And uh, landed in the States. And you know, I'm a living proof that those who seek will find. Yeah. You know, it's against all the odds that I'd be standing here today, knowing God, knowing Jesus Christ, being ordained in a few weeks with Pastor Nate. Um, it's a long way from my little town in Galilee. <clears throat> but I, I was seeking him. I wanted answers. And back in Philadelphia, um, 1980, 42 years ago, I had a divine encounter work with some born-again carpenters. They'll get a kick out of this. I'm a carpenter from Galilee. <laughs> but that's where the resemblance ends. <laughs> I don't have no Messiah complex. So, <clears throat> and uh, their love and their joy and the, what I saw in their lives attracted me made me jealous. It woke me to jealousy, like the Bible said. <clears throat> and uh, I said the sinner prayer about a hundred times because nothing happened the first time. I thought, I think it took the 
first time. And um, this is my phone. <laughs> Got that clown, you know, phone thing. Anyway, so I met my beautiful wife in Hawaii um, 35 years ago and stumbled in the Assemblies of God, started studying the Bible like crazy, never been in church before. And uh, I thought God called me to be a pastor. And that wasn't the case. He argued, he won. <laughs> I have to wait quite a few years <clears throat> to see his calling. Back in 2006, he finally opened the doors and called my wife and I to be missionaries to Israel. Now you would think, Israel is the Holy Land, right? Right? Yeah. You think everybody believes in God there, right? Yeah. Israel is probably one of the toughest mission fields on the planet. Um, and you know why? I'll tell you why. Because anything that God loves, the devil hates. Yeah. Right? That's his chosen people that brought us the Bible, that brought us Jesus. Good reason to hate them. It's coming back to Jerusalem to rule and reign for a thousand years, not to Dallas. <laughs> so, right? So, and <clears throat> anybody here have ever heard about what's called replacement theology? Okay. Yes, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Long time ago, about 300 years after Jesus, there was a meeting of 300 bishops in a town called Nicaea in Turkey area. And they decided to create the Catholic Church. And they decided that the Jews blew it, they rejected God, God is done with them, and the church is replacing Israel. Um, by the way, the lights a little higher than we were before, if you don't mind. I want my glasses to read. Yeah. Thank you. Is that that? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, now, the moment they grouped all the Jewish people, all of Israel, as they rejected the Christ, who were the disciples? Were the Jews? Who were the first hundreds of thousands of followers of Christ? Israel, it's Jews, right? So they did not reject him as a whole. There was some that did, mainly the phony Pharisees, the phony religious leaders hated him because he was putting them out of business. He was giving people a direct phone line to God. They wanted to be the mediators. Bottom line is, God has always had a remnant of Jewish people that love him and believe in him and believe in his son Jesus. But when you tell a lie enough times, it takes. Right? And unfortunately, that event led to almost 2,000 years of hatred and persecution of Jews in Israel from the church in the name of Jesus. Okay? Then came the Crusaders. Then came the Inquisition in Europe. All kind of killings of Jews all the time throughout history because they killed Christ. All the way to Martin Luther. You heard about him? The father of the Reformation. Do you know he wrote a book called The Jews and the Lies? And in that book, he hated them so much, he gave the final solution how to kill them and exterminate and burn the synagogues. Wow. The father of Protestant Christianity. And then, for my mom, the Nazis were good Lutherans. They went to church on Sunday and continued killing on Monday. So that's the image Jewish people have. 
between ch church and Jesus Christ. So when a new come and try to tell them about Jesus Christ, immediately a steel wall goes up of fear and mistrust. And overall, rightfully so. I mean, they missed, I don't know where they don't get the eternal covenant, the word eternal, where did they miss it? With the Jews, right? In, um, in Jeremiah 31, 3, it says, The Lord appeared of all the same. Yes, I have loved you with everlasting love. He's talking to Israel. I loved you for everlasting. How long is everlasting? It's forever. It's a long time. So, did you give up on them? Did you replace them with the church? It says. Right? And um, it says, But now says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, O Israel, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Isaiah, that's the one. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace removed, says the Lord, <clears throat> who has mercy on you. So, and you know, the word new covenant appears in Jeremiah, in the Old Testament. Did you know that? Jeremiah 31, 31, 34. Basically, he says, I'll bring a new covenant. Instead of having written on stones, I'm going to write on your hearts. Talking to who? Israel. Not the Gentiles. <coughs> now, did you know That Jesus had to cut off the Jewish people so you can be grafted on? To what? Huh? The root. You know, in the book of Romans it says, you are the branches, not the original branches, grafted branches. Won't make my sense if you boast against the roots. Because the roots keep the branches alive, the branches don't keep the roots alive. What does that mean? Israel is the base, is the root. Jesus Christ is the root. Okay? Let me ask you this. Why, why did God cut off the Jewish people temporarily? Temporarily. Because there were such bad, bad children and you guys such good children? Huh? What were you before you were grafted on as Gentiles? Enemies. You want to hear my version of it? My wife really enjoys when I say it every time. You were demon worshipping heathens. <laughs> it's important that you remember that. Because then, you, otherwise, if you don't remember that, you don't appreciate grace. What is grace? Undeserved favor, right? But God had mercy on the lost Gentiles. He said that he committed the Jewish people to disobedience. In some ways, God made it happen. And anybody, any sinner, would be disobedient. Yes? You think we have monopoly on being stiff-necked? Texans are not stiff-necked? <laughs> Stubborn? I can go down the line. <laughs> the 
the reason I'm sharing all this is I want to evoke new compassion and understanding of the Jewish people and how crucially important they are to the plan of God, beginning to end. Okay? And our destinies are not separated. They're together. Okay? You know, when Jesus died on the cross, did that grieve the heart of the Father? Was he sad when Jesus died? The Father? You think, I would say so, right? Yes. Seeing Jesus, his son suffer like this and then die a terrible death, really sad. I mean, God can cry. I'm sure he cried. He has feelings like us, right? Or we all have feelings like him. We don't think about it sometimes, how much he grieved him at that moment. I believe in my heart that he grieved and cried when he had to cut his beloved, beloved Israel off temporarily, knowing all the suffering that's going to come with it, all the way to the Holocaust. There's been a big bullseye painted on the Jewish people from the first day that God picked them. The first day that called Abraham. Right? Make sense? And the sad part is, it's not over yet. There are answers for some horrific wars coming real soon near you. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> back to why Israel is such a difficult mission field. Do you see now a little more why it's so difficult to go in and just preach the gospel in Israel? Israel has about eight to nine million people living. Out of those, only about 15 to 20,000 are what's called Messianic believers. Out of nine million. Talk about an unreached people group. We think only about China or Muslim country or... <clears throat> Israel is one of the most unreached for the gospel. Orthodox in Israel watch like hawks trying to prevent the gospel from getting to the people. And out of those 20,000, only about 1 to 2,000 that are not immigrants, they're native born Hebrew speaking people like myself, second, third, fourth generations in Israel, only less than 2,000 that know the Lord. That's an estimate from our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. To me, that's tragic mm -hmm. and sad. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we are running out of time, basically. Um, now, what is your role in the salvation of Israel? I'll leave the children out of it for now. What is your role? Adults. You see, he says in Genesis, those who bless Israel, Genesis 12, 3. Hold on. You have time to think about your answer. <laughs> I know that normally <clears throat> most people that preach here yeah. don't do questions and answers. We've been talking about Genesis 12 3 a lot this year, so hopefully yeah. they know. Excellent. Now, is there you know any other country or people group that the Bible talks about if you bless them, you'll be blessed? Do you know of anybody else? It's not a sales pitch for our missionary work. It's what God said. And unfortunately, a lot of churches and pastors have bought into the replacement theology we talked about earlier. And they don't view Israel as important or a mission field. And they miss out 
on this tremendous blessing that God wants to give. The churches, the business people, anybody who takes him at his word. You know, and you do tithing in the church. What scripture do you usually quote? Malachi. What does it say? Prove me this day. I think it was written wrong. I, th I would rewrite it. You know what I would write? A triple dog dare it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. right? You want to see God's move? He dares you. Right? Yeah. And I really need your prayers for favor for us for the little time we have left, the window of opportunity. When I go to churches and pastors, the God awakes them about the importance of Israel. And if they want some good insurance policy and blessings to come to the church in the hard times ahead, and there are hard times ahead, this will be a, a safe investment in Israel, whatever capacity. But more than funds or anything else is prayer. When I was in the Israeli military, I used to run around with a machine, big machine gun on my neck, like Rambo, <laughs> M60 it's called, old machine gun. And uh, my job was to go and run on the hillside, open fire on the enemy, keeping his heads down while my fellow soldiers charge ahead. When you sincerely pray for us, for this outreach into Israel, you're opening spiritual fire on the enemy keeping his head down while we're charging ahead. See? Just a good picture to remember and to pray. So you actually become an active <laughs> participant in the fight from your prayer closet. And you get the rewards for it because you're blessing Israel. Okay? Another aspect. Let me tell you quickly about the vehicle God has given us. Because it's such a tough place to penetrate, Israel. For years I was just grieving, crying out to God, how am I going to do it? Everything we tried, you know, it's not like most missionaries go to a country anywhere in the world. They reach some locals, they get saved, they start indigenous churches in their own language, right? And the stuff grows from there. All the typical formulas don't work in Israel. Because of all the history and the incredible spiritual warfare that's going on over there. A little piece of real estate right now as we pray. Standing. So, um, I didn't know how to do it. And then finally, in 2006, there was a war, a big war, with, have you heard the name Hezbollah? So it's a terrorist organization in Lebanon, right north of Israel, created by Iran. And my hometown of Maharia is three miles from the Lebanese border. And they started lobbing thousands and thousands of rockets on my town and a lot of towns in the north. It was the first time in the history of Israel that the Israeli military could not stop that attack. Civilians, including my mom and sister, were still alive, really suffered and had a lot of post-traumatic stress, mainly because a lot of them did not have proper bomb shelters. Okay? In the old buildings, apartment buildings in Israel, the bomb shelters are just like a naked concrete bunker with no, no ventilation, no bathroom. You cannot stay there a long time. That war went on for 30 day, 34 days, nonstop, every day. And God said, here's your vehicle. You go and start repairing, remodeling those bomb shelters through the love gifts of Christians and then we started taking teams with us of Christians to Israel to work on the bomb shelters. Call it a tour of duty. Mm -hmm. See, the regular tours that go to Israel, 
how they ever meet the Israeli. They are herded like sheep on the bus from side to side, holy side, they take pictures, they have a Bible study, they have on the Sea of Galilee, they have a nice smooth talking tour guide that you would swear that he's a believer because he knows all the right scriptures. And then he gets a nice big tip in the end. I'm being sarcastic because it saddens me that all these millions of loving, spirit-filled Christians going to Israel never meet and love on the local people. I'm not talking about preaching. Just seeing the true love of the Lord in His people. So, when we bring a team of volunteers to do some plastering and painting for a week on this old bomb shelter, it basically disturbs the hard drive of the Israelis. Because that's not the question they were told about the first time in their life, probably the only time they would meet a loving, born again Christian. And we can see within a few days in front of us how they get provoked with jealousy. It's tremendous. You ever seen those nature programs where there's a desert that hasn't had rain for years. Then suddenly the rain comes. And within a day, it's covered with flowers. Have you ever seen that? But once the water hits that soil, that dormant seed responds. I believe that God designed the Jewish hearts to respond the same way. See, it's a, it's a love story, beginning to end. First, he chooses them. Then he temporarily cuts them off so he can save y'all. Okay. But now, he wants to close the circle of love and wants the body of Christ to love the precious Jews back in. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we try to do. We try to make that connection. And uh, <clears throat> to date, since 2006, we're a small... We work outside of the assemblies, only recently, by itinerating only this year, the assemblies. But we did over 150 of these bomb shelters, just this warrior next to me and I, by the grace of God. You know, each shelter cost $25,000 to remodel, and God provided. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just a couple of scriptures I'd like to quote. Scriptures? Um, by the way, I, I won't have the time today, but if you want to really understand what God wants between Gentiles and Jews, the relationship, read Romans 11, chapter 11 careful several times. It's really fascinating how God talks about the relationship between Jews and Gentiles and how he, he wants the Gentiles not to get too proud. That part is, is goes back to what I said about that God has never gave out the covenant to them. Okay? And it's a warning. And he was a Gentile, wants Gentiles not to get too proud and haughty and think they're better, that they're better, because then you missed the whole issue of race that you didn't deserve. Um, you know, have you heard about Gog and Magog? Anybody here? Raise your hand. Gog and Magog. No? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's an end time war prophesied in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. Now, the players in that war are sitting right now on the border with Israel. And that's Iran, Russia, all the northern countries about Israel. You know, God means the head of, which I believe will be Russia, leading that attack. 
But Magog, if you knew that little Bible trivia, was the one of the grandchildren of Noah. If you look it up in Genesis, you'll find Magog. He settled in all these countries north of Israel. Okay? Mount Arab is in Turkey. The ark came to a stop. So they settled all there. So all these nations north of Israel and Iran as well are coming against Israel. Um, only this week I heard that Israel is doing some of the biggest drills, military drills of attacking Iran because they're going to have the nuclear bomb pretty soon. So we are watching live this prophecy coming together right now. I don't know how long we'll have this window of opportunity to work in Israel peacefully. So again, I need your prayers that whatever we do, we expedite it. We can do as much as we can. And so, they're not, and then after this war, we get caught up. The, the great tribulation happens while we're having dinner in heaven. And then comes Armageddon with the Antichrist, and the whole world comes against little Israel, tiny, tiny Israel. The whole world is going to come against it. Now, the interesting part is that the people we touch when we go there. Could very, it touched them effectively. The hearts really get touched. Could very well be one of two groups. Have you heard about the 144,000 witnesses during the tribulation? Mm -hmm. Are they from Texas or the old Jew? Probably Jews. 12,000 from each tribe, it says, of Israel. So 144,000 Jews are going to evangelize the world through the tribulation. They're going to save billions with a B. So if you effectively reach one of them, it's a good investment. And then there's another group that's going to be the... See, the sad reality is, when we go to Israel, look at the people we're talking to, two-thirds of the Israeli population will be gone dead before it's over. Okay? So it's not over for the Jews. The Holocaust was not the last chapter. And, but I believe the people that have been seeking, that have been touched, or the seeking on their own, sincerely, God can preserve them, protect them through that horrible war. And then it says, when he shows up, after he finished with Antichrist, They'll see him, Zacharias, as whom they have pierced and mourned bitterly as if a lost son. They recognize immediately that he is the Jewish Messiah. He says, all of Israel shall be saved in one day. Wow. That day. And then he's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. So he's going to restore the Jewish people. What All the promises he made to them he's going to fulfill. Right? God is not man that he should lie. Right? All that's coming and it's accelerating towards us. Israel should be the barometer for churches and countries about God's plans. Keep your eye on Israel. Not on politics, not Democrats, not Republicans. Israel. And if the United States turns their back on Israel, we're in trouble. Um, <clears throat> It says in Psalms, Psalm 122. Do you see it over there back there? In the group? Psalm 122? On the screen. On the screen, yeah. Here you go. It says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. If you love Israel, you prosper. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. Now, when he says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, is he praying for political peace? No more wars? 
That's how normally people read that, right? That makes sense with what I just described. It's coming. There's not only political peace. So what peace is he talking about? I know only one everlasting peace that's in our hearts when we know Jesus Christ. Right? <clears throat> God's desire that his forgotten chosen people will meet the Jewish Messiah. That they've been blinded for 2,000 years. And then it says in Isaiah 40, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out for her. That her warfare is ended. That her iniquity is pardoned and she has received from the Lord Lord's hands double her sins. So, God wants the Gentiles to comfort Israel. Um, and, and then the last one is Romans 15, 27. It says, It pleased them indeed, and they are the debtors, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things. Have you taken part of the spiritual gifts of the, of the Jews? Yeah. Promises to Abraham, etc., etc.? All the their duty, what's the word, duty, is also to minister to them in material things. And it's not a guilt trip. You know what I mean? Some people use it as such. You know, you owe us reparations, right? You mean to us for 2,000 years, now give us some money. I grew up with a beautiful Jewish mother. The Jewish mothers are experts in guilt trips. <laughs> I grew up with those. So I will not inflict on anyone <clears throat> what I hate. <coughs> but, that's okay. But, There's an element that God is trying to remind the church. Minister in material things to the Jews, if you partake. And that's whatever way God puts them in by his heart. And you know, if anybody here wants to partner with us on a regular basis, there's some cards that pledge cards. If you want to fill them and partner with us, partake in that blessing, hallelujah. Somehow, in the future, want to work for a bomb shelter? I'll take a flyer. You know, other pastors, you, just anything God puts in your hearts. It's teamwork. You know? So, I just want to thank you. I know it's I have beautiful, patient children here. Thank you for sitting patiently. Uh -huh. was, was it interesting? So, so. <laughs> so thank you. And I pray just awesome blessings on your young church. This place will be full in no time. Get your own building. And it will be a tremendous blessing in this community. Um, that's a basic picture of a few of before and after. Um, the ones on the left are before, mattresses on the floor, dirty concrete floor, no ventilation, only those holes in the walls are for air, uh, no bathroom usually. Uh, when we're done with it, we have a tile floor, air conditioned unit, beds, small kitchenette, working bathroom. People can stay down there for a month or two if they have to. 
Other pictures? This is the one of the teams just plastering the walls so they don't look like a bunker, they look more like a room in a house for the children psychologically. That's one of our teams. Actually, this team is from Corpus Christi. Yay! Yeah. And this, on the bottom picture, that's one of the ladies, all ladies living in the house, coming and hugging the volunteers. Aww. They just fall in love with the people overnight. Everybody falls in love with everybody. We put a sign and a picture of the team when we leave, and the sign says, He who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. Remind them that God is protecting them and them. But this church, this shelter was remodeled by this, this church, by your loving Christian friends who love you and standing by your side. So every time they run down to that shelter, we're reminded that Jesus visited the building. Go ahead. The best part of the week after they're done comes Friday. We go to have Sabbath dinners in their homes which is a very sacred, holy time for Jewish families. And they're inviting these Gentiles into their home. And it's wonderful friendships happen. Go ahead. That's the team and the residents when it's time to go. I'm just very grateful and happy that you came. Go ahead. The last portion of the tour of duty for four days is touring Israel. Since you already made it all the way there, it would be a shame if you don't see some of the holy sites. And you get baptized in the Jordan River. That's in the train station at the airport. That's uh, having a falafel in town. In the area. Um, picture on the right is a typical family that when I think about those bomb shelters, I think about those faces. Real people, real children. That we have to deal with that horrible reality and the relief they have that they have a safe in the shelter to go to. The gentleman down there is almost a hundred years old Holocaust survivor that just fell in love with us. We even put an air conditioning unit in his bedroom because he didn't have one. It was that dying in the summer from the heat. And he is an Orthodox Jew. Normally they don't like Christians at all. But he fell in love with our team. He saw the love, was attracted to it, and he reached his heart. That's it, right? Wow. Any questions quickly? Anybody? Go ahead. Are there more than That's, there's, the whole building has to go down to that shelter. Usually 12 to 24 apartments, 60 to 100 people. They're not that big, so, but they don't have a choice. They changed the building code in Israel later in the 90s. Iraq well, shot rockets was, uh, on Israel. They woke up, realized that threat. So every, every new apartment or, or house, most people live in apartments in Israel had to have a one room in the house reinforced, it became the shelter of the one room. And they did away with the communal shelters on the bottom of the building. But more than half of the buildings in Israel are all the apartment buildings. And those shelters just look like anybody else. So is, is one area an area you're focusing on as far as where shelling comes in more, or is it all well, at that time, northern Israel got the brunt of it. Throughout anything close to the border, all the way to Haifa, like 20, 30 miles, got shell. <clears throat> the closer you were to the border, the more shell, shell uh, rockets were flying. Now we have a similar threat in the south, from Hamas, from Gaza. And since 2006, unfortunately, they had only about 10,000 rockets then, now they have close to 300,000. Iran has been arming them like crazy. And um, many more long-range, sophisticated, exact rockets, not just dumb rockets. So um, the threat is much bigger now. And 
the bomb shelters are unfortunately will be one of the most important humanitarian needs in the years to come of the living in Israel. So not all of Israel is within range, I guess. But still, when you're closer to the border, you're higher the danger. So how many have you done so far? Over 150. And how many more are you looking at? Show me the money, I'll do a thousand. <laughs> Maybe you can. It depends. I'm, I hope to do as many as I can. But I don't believe I have enough much time left where things are moving. So I'm praying to run into some wealthy Christian business people <laughs> who don't want to leave their money for the Antichrist and give me the money to do hundreds of these shelters. It's like, anybody here seen the movie Schindler's List? It's it was a rich German guy, businessman, that saved Jewish people, bought them from the Germans to save their life. Mm. And he used all his money, and he saved over a thousand people. But it was one at a time. Uh, and in the end, he started crying, saying, I could have gotten ten more if I sold my car. So I know that we're not going to solve the big problem. And none of them, among all the bomb shelters in Israel, will save all the Jews. But there's a saying in Hebrew. That, that he, you want to hear how it sounds in Hebrew? Yeah. 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 He who saves one soul out of Israel as if he saved the whole world. And that's really the best way to look at it. Is, each soul is so important to God that all heaven rejoices and all soul is saved. That's how important every soul is. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Cindy, would you come up here, please? Rebecca? Would you do me a favor and give us the number six uh, erotic blessing uh, in Hebrew? Amen. 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 We're going to give a blessing as well to Ronnie and Cindy and bless their ministries. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you for sending and calling Ronnie and, and Cindy to this ministry to reach the lost, as uh, Ronnie says, the, un the unreached people group of the Jews. And Lord, uh, we know that they uh, truly are our, um, our brothers in the faith. Uh, and that, um, Lord, I thank you that throughout the ages that you have uh, preserved a remnant and that you have a plan for them. Uh, uh, Lord, you have a plan that, that is going to use the Jews to reach the world. And that is just so exciting. And, and in order for that to happen, uh, Lord, there has to, be, um, there has to be those like Ronnie that, that continue to keep the faith and, and reach one Jew at a time. Lord, I thank you that you have equipped them with this skill Lord, when he said that he was a, uh, a carpenter from Galilee, Lord, that you trained him here in the States uh, working for uh, godly uh, carpenters and, and, and that you have brought divine appointments along the way for decades to get him to this point uh, where he is now fully equipped uh, to go uh, and, and to do the same as a general contractor and, and as someone bringing in teams of Americans uh, to Israel to do this tour of duty. Lord, I pray that you would uh, cause each of us to search our hearts on, on how we can best support um, the Jordans and, and the, this ministry. Uh, Lord, provide for their every need. Keep them safe, especially. Lord, that they would also be fully funded. And Lord, that there would be an abundance, God, that... Um, that you would continue those divine appointments that bring the people who can say, I'll take 10 of those shelters, thank you. And Lord, that, um, that then you would bring the hands that would serve and, and the hearts that would love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. And go in peace and serve the Lord.